It was truly a day of joy and merrymaking, as the friends, relatives, well wishers, and associates of Emeritus Professor Nimi Briggs gathered to felicitate him and to share the joys of his 70th birthday with him and his family. The biblical dress course and 10 years has come to wear the insignia of accomplishment of destiny, as well as the possession of divine mandate to venture into extra time. But, though retired, Emeritus Professor Nimi Briggs is obviously not tired, for like the golden eagle, which he truly is, his strength is renewed daily. Armed with the divine mandate of a 40-year-old and the poise of Tom Morris's seven seas of success, which he has blended with expertise in public and human relations, Professor Briggs, the man of purpose, hereby gracefully propels into extra time with the uncommon zeal to accomplish more feats for the benefit of mankind. To this super genius, Emeritus Professor Nemesir Dim Briggs, this age is worth celebrating. He sees his 70th birthday as a day of joy and gratitude to the Almighty God for the opportunity to live on this earth plane and to make positive impacts on mankind. It feels good. It is a way by which you thank the Almighty God for his mercies. Mm. And then you thank people who have been good to you, who have helped you in your ladder climbing up. Um, I have many persons who are coming here today mm -hmm. who have contributed positively to my life. Mm. And I'm very grateful. I take this opportunity to thank them. Yeah. Um, what they have done for me, those of them who are older than me, may others do to their family, to yeah. their children. Yeah. And those who are younger than me, may they also have such opportunities for yeah. others to do for them. Yeah. That is what keeps the world going around. Exactly. And um, the world should be a great place where people are happy, mm. where we help one another and where we live towards um, what God has attained for all of us. So that's, that's my, that's the way I live. And so he invited his numerous friends, relatives, well wishers, and associates to an event that turned out to be a gathering of who is who in Nigeria. It all happened at the famous Abitimi Banigo Auditorium of the unique University of Port Harcourt, on Saturday, the first day of March 2014. Professor Briggs actually noted that it is the grace of God and possibly his daily routines, lifestyle and mannerisms that ends him the renewal of strength. Permit me to observe that from the time I saw you as VC here, you never changed really. <laughs> <laughs> well, many people say so. Um, I have not noticed any physical change in my body because I'm still very active, yes. and um, I thank God for it. Yeah. Um, I do a workout every morning. Yeah. Whether that helps me, I think so. I think it does help. Uh -huh. um, I eat no more than twice a day, mm -hmm. uh -huh. and um, I think that helps. Then I, I keep a clean mind. Yes. I try to find something good in everybody I meet. Yeah. I, I don't go about um, trying to pull down people. Mm -hmm. and. Um, I pray, you know, yes. all these I think help. Yes. Uh, one thing I observe is that those who really celebrate, yes. somehow they, they really have made marks in the society. <laughs> yes. And uh, one myth has it in my local community that yes. um, those who make marks really have one uh, powerful occultist or strong god that occultist. really, really <laughs> busy drones for them and uh, gives them the enablement to excel. Well, uh, How has it been with you? Okay, let me answer that. <laughs> I don't know, I don't have any occultist uh, god whatsoever. Yeah. I have the almighty god to whom um, one prays um, a day, every day. Um, it is important that you have an alignment with um, an almighty God yeah. because that um, directs your part yeah. and um, ensures that you don't go about harming people and yeah. being evil to others. Yeah. No, according to God, one does not have any at all. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so I don't subscribe to that. <laughs> yeah. God created you and um, you had parents who um, were, you know, inculcated God's um, um, the, the position God should occupy in your life into you. Yeah. And then you got married to a woman who is very, 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 very ardent in her relationship with God. Yeah. And all this meant that um, 
you could only live in that environment, in the environment in which God was present all the time. Okay. Yeah, that, that, is the, that is the answer, yes. Uh, in, your in your family? Yes. In your family? Yes. How has the Lord manifested himself? Well, very well. Uh, my children are very good. I, I can break that statement with a lot of pride. Okay, you have they children? Have, yes, I do have three children. Uh, uh, uh. They have not, not in any way, at any time, given me any cause for concern. Mm -hmm. They have all been very well behaved. I have a, uh, well, not a boy, a man and two ladies. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, the first two have got children. The last one is um, yet to. And um, I'm very, very pleased with them. They have not, when I see occasionally how children behave in some families, I get very worried. And um, you have more cause to thank the Almighty God that their children have not behaved in that manner. Yeah. Um, a manner that will bring shame and reproach to the family. A manner that will cause a lot of concern about what they do. I haven't had that misfortune, uh, what I call misfortune. Yeah. So that has been a great source of joy to one. <laughs> they, they you know. Going to church, knowing, knowing God, trying to reverence God, is not, it's not humility. It is the right thing to do. Yeah. In fact, I, I feel that I don't even reverence him sufficiently. And that hurts from time to time. But knowing God is the, is the, is the right thing for man to, go, to do. Because the Bible says that that is the ultimate aim and purpose of creation of, yeah. uh, of um, human beings. Yeah. Um, humility, if you call it humility, I'm always, always, always aware of the fact that, look, it's only opportunity. Nothing is different between this man and I. If he had the opportunity that I had, he probably would have done better than I did. Yeah. So that I had the opportunity and I am what I am does not mean that he is useless or whatever. No, 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 no. And even so long as life exists, tomorrow it could even be better. So I'm constantly aware of these facts and um, I would put them constantly before me in life. It's you that there will be challenges and then you take those challenges, you, 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 you learn to overcome them. Um, once, you are once you are at peace with uh, human beings mm. and you are at peace with your Almighty God, you'll overcome the challenges. And um, there is no life um, where there are no challenges. Even this period, since I left as a vice chancellor, I had some serious health challenges. But fortunately, the Almighty God pulled me out of them. And um, I am quite strong. I can do, you know, most things that I wish to do. Mm. And I thank him for it. So. To his one and only dear wife, Lady D. The Midi Golden Eagle is a man whom the Lord has favored. He is a worthy father who has taught his eagles how to fly higher. She recalls how they met each other and expressed thanks to the Almighty God, the Divine Matchmaker, for that enablement. And she remains optimistic that he would continue to show her in excellence because the Lord is his strength. How does it feel to have him? Very Your better half. Very elated, and I'm so grateful to God. Yeah, yeah. This day, we look forward to it, and it has come. Yeah. We are really, really appreciative. And you know, when one, you know, is celebrated this way, you, you don't know you you are short of words. Yes. But all what we can say is thanks to God, because it is Him alone mm -hmm. that can make somebody to achieve whatever the person achieves. Yes. Uh, it's the grace of God and the love of God. Exactly. But I, I know that even aside from here, mm -hmm. man like Bruce is a workaholic. <laughs> Didn't you have a time to grumble? I know <laughs> that. The grumbling time is over. <laughs> <laughs> so when, when you see him walking like that, you are also walking. So mm -hmm. you don't have time to grumble. <laughs> when you walk, he walks, you walk. And when you come together, you come together. Yes. Uh, At times when I talk to ladies, uh, <laughs> forgive me if I derail too much. Mm. How do you really come about this myself? How do I really come about this? <laughs> <laughs> well, in the tribute I wrote, um, I said something that we knew little of ourselves. And in my secondary school, mm -hmm. one good late afternoon, I won't say afternoon, yeah. late towards evening, after I play a lot of hockey. Yeah. After playing the hockey, I was just getting myself ready to smoke my gari and the granola. Are you telling as, me? As a student, you know. <laughs> I, my metro, that I want Mrs. West, she's late now, sent for me that somebody came and called me, metro is calling and said, oh, I want to drink her wine. I she wonder. Me now, now. <laughs> I went. 
But she didn't talk not anything. She didn't say anything much. So how are you getting? I said, Auntie, it's fine. No, I want to. Uh, we just finished playing our games, and I want to just drink. I said, eh, okay. But the lady was sitting. I recognized the lady was sitting there. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I didn't take notice of her, but I knew somebody. Yeah. I knew somebody was sitting there. So that was it. I went the next time. My mother sent for me. <laughs> my mother sent for me. Do you know such and such a person? I tend to think. I know her daughter. My her daughter is my friend. I know her daughter, but I've not actually met her. Although I buy things from her, she sells. She sold articles as a mm -hmm. Although I buy things, provisions from her, knowing that she's my friend's mother, but not through you to know her. Yeah, my father. And I said that ah, they are coming for you. I said, who is the mm -hmm. person coming for me now? Well, as a young girl, I finished school, and that was it. I got married. So I finished my secondary school. I got married. So it's a long time. So yes. no matter what, whatever happens, you know that he's still there. Amen. Uh, Amen. Amen. Mom, congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> now that I have an opportunity to chat with you, yes, on a one-on-one -on -one basis, yes. Let me ask this one. Please do. <laughs> you are of the medical profession. I am indeed. Yes. But you excel so much as a PR practitioner. As a PR practitioner, medicine teaches you how to interact with all human beings, yeah. all classes of human beings, the rich, the poor, the whatever. Because when someone is ill, before ill health, before the, the structure called medicine, all persons are equal. I.e., if you, a, a wretched poor person, come to meet me with a lobar pneumonia, it is the same way I will treat you as a person, the king of um, wherever, of Nigeria, mm -hmm. who comes to meet me with the same condition. So once medicine is able to teach you that, you have the ingredients with which you should relate with human beings. Yeah. You relate with human beings on the basis of equality, yeah. on the basis of fairness, on the basis of respect, and on the basis of fair to, for the Almighty God. Yeah. Because all human beings ultimately are equal. Yeah. The fact that you have um, two naira in your pocket while I have 200 naira, ultimately it doesn't make, it doesn't make uh, much of a difference. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, nature normalizes and equalizes all those things. So um, the medical profession, if you say that I'm a doctor and I'm, <laughs> I'm a good PR man, I would say that the medical profession teaches you that. Yeah. It teaches you how to interact, how to how to relate to human beings. That's what PR is, PR is all about. Yes. And I think it has helped me a lot in my career, in my cause in life, that I know how to deal with human beings. 99.99% yeah. um, of people I meet, I'll be able to get on with them. Mm -hmm. Even the 0.0001%, um, it will not be my fault. Exactly. And even on that, I'll keep working at it to ensure that um, I convince that person that at the end of the day, both of us are equal before God. Um, he, uh, there is no way I'm superior to him or her. And yeah. that uh, he or she should look at it in that way. Mm -hmm. And we we'll get on. When um, one was in charge of the affairs of this university, that was a tremendous help. The ability, the, the fact that you knew that everybody was equal and um, um, try and be fair to everybody that came your pathway. Mm -hmm. This doesn't mean, of course, in fact, it does mean that if Mr. A does something wrong, you tell Mr. A that you've done something wrong exactly. and that you're going to um, pay the penalty. Mm -hmm. You don't then go and undo Mr. A for Mr. B or Mr. C for Mr. D. Yeah. I thank God I can say quite proudly that I never did anything like that. Yeah. And um, I thank the Almighty God for the wisdom, the guidance he gave to me when I was looking after the affairs of this great institution. Mm -hmm. And um, I also thank all members of this, this university's community because the, the way they have taken me, it's been tremendous, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, I can walk into virtually any single yes. house in this yes. compound yes. and go to the kitchen and take food and yes. eat. And um, uh, that statement will be correct for, for more than 90% of the homes in this, yes. in this compound. And nobody will grudge me. Nobody will say, why are you eating my food or oh, put poison in it? And I would not even be afraid that they will put any poison on it or anything. Nothing like that. The children of Professor Briggs express thanks to the Almighty God for the worthy father and friend he gave them. They noted that he has remained the caring father, and he taught them the best of virtues of life. He made them imbibe the virtues of excellence in whatever they venture into, and to be committed to God, hard work, and noble-mindedness. With 
uh, we thank God. It's it's um, he's rare. He's rare. He's not. He's um, he's rare. There are very few like him. Um, very helpful. Very inspirational. Very 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 rounded. Very rounded. Well, I if I said no, I'd be lying. It's, it's yes, it's true. But um, because of the home we've all, you know, the three of us have grown up in, um, under my mother and my father, it's. Um, it's something you pick up naturally as yeah. well, in whatever you do. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> um, that, you know, God should reward him in the same token as he has touched many many lives. Not, yes. not, I mean, forget his immediate family, yes. my mom and my sisters. Yes. But, you know, that God should reward him in the same token that he has touched and reached so many lives. Many of whom he doesn't even know. Yes. Right? But um, God should reward him for that. Just remarkable. He has been a wonderful friend, extremely loving, extremely caring, extremely concerned about the well being of his children. And he's somebody that gives you so much confidence and, um, should I say, strength. He always makes you understand that he's behind you at every single point in time and he is there to support you, hold your hand, lead you on and guide you. Actually for the entire part of my my entire life, um, of course the part I've been with him which is like my entire life, um, I've had one remarkable experience after the other with my father. He's somebody that has made unconditional love so real and normal to every member to every member of his family and um, because of his strides he's somebody that I can tell you leads clearly by example mm -hmm. in the sense that he expects the best from you because he actually puts in the best in everything he does I call his touch a touch of excellence in every single thing he does he gives you that excellent signature yeah. and it is almost contagious in the sense that because you see somebody that loves, supports and believes so much in you do this thing so effortlessly, you actually just want to do the self-same thing and walk in his path. And in fact, one thing that he says is, you know, when we tell him that, uh, Daddy, congrats, or you've done really well and all that, he'll say, thank you, my child. And the one thing I pray is that you will do ten times more than more I have done. <laughs> and we always say, Amen. Amen. So that, he's been the only type of father anybody should have. He's the best. Uh -huh. And I don't say that because he's my father. I say that because I think it's the truth. Uh -huh. He was um, caring. He was strict when he had to be. Mm -hmm. He was funny when he had to be. He mm -hmm. was loving, generous. And um, he, I think that what I love about my father the most is the fact that he encourages you to be the best at whatever it is you're doing. Mm -hmm. He listens to your ideas. Um, he feels every opportunity is an opportunity to learn even from you. So he's always willing to listen to you. Yeah. Your prayer for him? That we will continue to have more and more occasions to celebrate like this. Yeah. I, um, I just want to, I, I just love the fact that he's around us and I just want to continue being with him. So my prayer for him is that even as God has brought him to this point, we will see him from strength to strength Amen. and help him even do more things than he has already done. Amen. Congrats. Thank you. <laughs> so friends and associates of Emeritus Professor Briggs also rained and comments on him. Uh, after uh, retiring from here, I set up a publishing house. Mm -hmm. We my research yeah, yeah. And uh, this book that uh, is uh, published in yeah. 70, uh, we did publish under our, uh, our logo. Okay. Yeah. How do you find him as a person? I hear you also work with him something. Uh, it, it, the level of uh, energy that he has displayed in whatever the other things is uh, really astonishing. Yes. Uh, and uh, he deserves uh, the success that he has achieved so far. Okay. He's a man that mm. when you are around him, yeah. when you are around him, you have nothing to fear. He will drive you to the extent that you will start even walking like him. And for every little thing you do, 
he appreciates you. Mm -hmm. He can thank you a million times for just one little thing you do. Mm -hmm. Motivating you for that to do more. Mm -hmm. Encouraging you to do more. He's a wonderful character. God bless him. Mm -hmm. I know you have some prayer for him. My wish, my prayer, is that the good Lord, who has kept him till today, that he's celebrating his 70th birthday, mm -hmm. will continue to keep him. So that we, the younger ones, will continue to draw from his wealth of experience. Man, I respect so much. Because I mean, Jimmy Briggs, I respect him very much. And I think that anything what I was after to come to the press, I must be here for him. Yes, sir. Somebody I have a lot of regard for him. We are in the same brackets. Okay, okay. Besides, I know that he's done very well. As a medical doctor, because I <laughs> fell out of the way of medical doctor, a medical doctor. I'm a killer, I saw a killer. So, therefore, we are very much happy. You located into keeping us alive, defending us. <laughs> yes, good to have you around. I wonder what prayer you have for him. Well, I pray that he has long life. Prosperity to yes, sir. Long life for now. Yes, long for us. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. 25 years ago, uh -huh. I was pro chancellor of this university. Wow. 1986 to 90. I'm looking around. I've been back since. Uh, mm -hmm. Looking around the development. Yes. Yes. The ambience. Yes. Yeah. Everything looks good. We thank God for the leadership, yeah. which the also of today was part of yes. positive testimony. Yeah, but See, he did a lot for this. Day. But for you to take the strain to come here on this day, mm -hmm. you must have value for him. Of course. I look forward to coming here. Uh, because I knew I would meet eminent people like the bishop. Yes. <laughs> New old you know, French. Yes. And of course, I would see more and more buildings. Eh? Exactly. exactly. So to me, it's a very nice experience. Yeah. And it was also my yeah. ah. So, how did you, sorry, how did you find bricks particularly? Well, let me tell you this. The only regret I have about bricks is he never went to the University of Ipa. He went to the <laughs> So I didn't have an opportunity to teach him, <laughs> but he's always acknowledged it. Okay? And you will see he's written something in his own book about me. Uh -huh. You will find it. My Lord, my Lord, it's good to... My Lord. My Lord, it's good to have you around too. Uh, you also know Briggs. It's the same thing about Briggs. Briggs is so pleasant. He does not only make friends, he keeps them. Wonderful. Excellent. And he smiles. Very humbly, very affectuous, man. Very, that's why he doesn't look old. Yes, I told him at 70, and you are still like this <laughs> younger than I look. <laughs> the collective desire of all guests at the occasion was succinctly expressed in the preamble to the opening prayer, which formally kick started the birthday celebration. God said. I'm not going to breathe life into men and women endlessly. Eventually, they are going to die. From now on, they can expect a lifespan of 120 years. Let us pray. Mighty, ever-living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we try you, God. We worship you. We bless and magnify your holy name. We thank you for the blessing of this day. Your son, Professor Nimi Briggs, attained the age of three score and ten a few days ago in faraway Turin, where the burial shroud of our Lord Jesus Christ is preserved. That's a blessing. We thank you for preserving Nimi through all the changing seasons of life. And that you preserved your praise in his mouth and brought him into many achievements and contributions to humanity. Take all the glory, Lord, and all the adoration. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray for your continued protection upon him, his wife, and family, and for even greater contribution to mankind. 
thank you for the book launch of today, where we celebrate the blessings you poured into this, your servant. We thank you for travel mercies granted to all who have assembled here. We commend the chairman and all the contributors at this event to your direction. May everything we do today be to your honor and glory, we pray, in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Executive Governor of River State, His Excellency, Right Honorable Chibika Mechi, observed that Professor Nimibris has remained apolitical, steadfastly concerning himself with issues that bring the best of developmental benefits to the people of River State. He commended Professor Bree's commitment to this objective and zeal for hard work. The Governor then named a 200 bed hospital at the River State University of Science and Technology in honor of Emeritus Professor Nimidim Abriggs. And I knew that if we need to conduct a credit election, we need to put somebody who is credible. If I go and put somebody who is my political ally, then nobody will participate in that election. Again, I call on Prof. I can accept that challenge without too so much pressure. I don't know. 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 I don't <laughs> I said, bro, tomorrow morning we are going to come against you. And we fight. Because he never listened to what we were saying. But we need to alert that he's an opposition member. <laughs> <laughs> that he told them in the meeting. What's all these things that we need to do? We have the position to win. That that's a pretty rule. This is a case to be won. It was an opposition. Guys, the hospital of nearly 400 beds that will be ready at the end of March for commissioning. Yeah. If I catch the issue of U.S., you will take it in place. We pay 100%. So it's not about whether we are winning contracts or not. We We have hired those to manage the hospital. You know, we told our doctors, manage patients, let's get those who manage hospitals to manage hospitals. So we've got an American company that will manage the hospital. And the hospital is located at the River State University of Science and Technology. What to name that hospital, Professor Nimi, please? One highlight of the birthday ceremony was the launching of a book, Nimi Briggs at 70. Selected writings and addresses, 2006 to 2013. Of the book. Now you can see a 40-year-old one at the back of the book, the front of the book. A truly lasting lesson of this 70th birthday celebration. These speeches and writings not only remind us the quality of leadership and self-sacrifice offered by Emeritus Professor Andy Briggs, and the prodigious contributions he made to national development. They continue to illuminate the pathways of the younger generation of professionals as they strive to make the Nigerian nation a better place for the generality of its inhabitants. His Excellency Ambassador Dr. Patrick Delecole, OFR, unveiled the book with a handsome donation. At 70, you are near some kind of a departure gate. <laughs> but let's not go there. <laughs> At 70, uh, some kinds of things have departed also from you. <laughs> but we're not going to deal with that either. <laughs> Professor Nimi Briggs has spent a lifetime looking after pregnant women, for those who wish to be. The essence of his belief is the very sensible idea that if you educate women, empower them, then their children are likely to be healthy, 
and grow up as productive members of society. Educate a woman and you educate a nation. He and his colleagues have spent years improving the health of women, reducing the incidence of maternal death and death related to pregnancy. Reviewing the book, the Vice Chancellor of the University of Port Harcourt, Professor Joseph Ajenka, noted that in words and deeds and the totality of his lifestyle, Emeritus Professor Nimi Briggs manifested himself as a mirror that reflects the goodness of the Almighty God our Creator. He also highlighted the concern of Professor Briggs for the development of River State, the Niger Delta region, and Nigeria generally. Emeritus Professor Briggs harvest of thoughts on the developmental challenges of society, hereby constituted a compendium of reference materials for solving the problems of societal development. The common strand that runs through his addresses and writings is development. Development that seeks to address the challenges of society, improve well-being, life expectancy, and quality of life of Nigerians in particular and humanity in general. His concern for development has given birth to a book worth celebrating. More fulfilling would be the realization of the Niger Delta Energy Corridor that could transform the region from a poor, backward, and neglected area to a developed and peaceful region, reminiscent of the phenomenal growth of Dubai in the Gulf of Arabia. Between 2006 and 2013, Emeritus Professor Briggs participated in preparing several valuable reports to enhance the electoral process based on his experience as chairman of the River State Electoral Commission. He contributed chapters of books and other reports all bordering on development. But the focus in this particular publication is to make available to the reading public a compendium of his harvest of thoughts and reflections on the developmental challenges of society which he presented at different events. Professor Jenkins observed that Professor Briggs has so much love for the University of Port Harcourt. It is this love that drove him to host his landmark 70th birthday celebration in the university, for which the university attracted much more number of dignitaries than the university has ever experienced in one single event. Professor Briggs is, uh, his life is intricately connected with the life of, with the life of this university. Yeah. And those of us who have come to know him, serve under him, see him as a great mentor. He's somebody who knows how to achieve results. I feel highly elated. He could have taken this event to town. Okay? Mm -hmm. But by bringing it here, Struggling all the way from town to now to host this event here, you can imagine the number of people he has attracted to this environment, yes. including the government. So we are grateful to him for his uh, love of this university, mm -hmm. and we would like to continue to be associated with him. Mm -hmm. In another major highlight of the birthday celebration, being a lecture titled The University Administrator and the Magician, The Nigerian Paradox. Professor Isaac Adewole, FAS, Vice Chancellor of the University of Ibadan, observed that why chief executives of ivory towers in the developed world are concerned with the building of entrepreneurial cultures, evolution and sustenance of knowledge economy, as well as issues that has to do with portfolio of grants won, Nobel Prizes won, patterns and number of students carefully employed after graduation. Some of our people expect the Nigerian Vice Chancellor to be a magician, creating illusions of seemingly impossible supernatural feats. An example of which is the ability to produce electricity, even when there is none from the national grid. He opined that rather than the sorcerer's ritual magic and its illusions, the magician in the Nigerian Vice Chancellor should come alive in form of extraordinary skill of creativity that could generate the resources to keep the core business of the university alive. We must adapt and evolve our portfolios. 
will include but not limited to teaching, research, publishing, knowledge transfer, public engagement, marketing, and entrepreneurship. The current emphasis on internally directed revenue calls for creativity. The allocations of overhead and capital goods kept tumbling yearly. The magician and vice chancellors must come to the fore. We need to be creative and generate resources to keep our core businesses alive. I have been recognized and invited my father, the one of our Nigeria's foremost educationists, Emeritus Professor Otenti Ndoka, to the high table. He still plays tennis at the Ajib Sheikh Club. He plays tennis there because he will beat you. The event was anchored by William Ward, the executive master of ceremony of the unique University of Port Harcourt, who, in the words of the chairman, Emeritus Professor Tekana Tamuno, rightly ensured that there is no difference between the guests at the high table and the very special guests at the other side of the high table. The chairman then declared the event open by applauding the enormous divine endowments in the life of Emeritus Professor Nimi Briggs and prayed the Lord to bless him more and more. You are a man of God. You hardly say that you have a nature in the church, but we do it in that capacity. You will do more exploits for God to lose them. You are still despite all the challenges in life. On behalf of this distinguished gathering, on behalf of my one and only government, my government, my brother, my good friend, I want to say congratulations. More congratulations, and yet more congratulations. For a life well spent under the watchful eye of God, your benevolent maker, the source of all good and perfect things, Father of light, with whom there is no variable nor shadow of color. He is the one who has blessed you and made this gathering possible. The chairman of the governing council of the University of Port Harcourt, Engineer Gessia Samoe, expressed pleasure at the character and personality of Emeritus Professor Nimi Briggs and pray that such magicians continue to emerge as vice-chancellors of the unique university, so that the university will continue to experience this type of celebration. On behalf of the university, he named the building in honor of Professor Briggs, and also made a handsome donation. In appreciation of his numerous and selfless contributions to humanity and the nation, he was duly recognized and awarded National honor of Officer of the Order of the Niger OON. Let me at this point join many others who wish Professor Nimi Briggs a very happy 70th birthday. The Governing Council has also decided to name one of the most prestigious buildings that are coming up now.
and hopefully we'll be given the privilege of hosting. Thank you very much. The Professor Ikimalu, the chairman of the local organizing committee of this international event, the success of the event and the high level of attendance recorded is much more a result of the hard work and infectious friendliness of Professor Nimi Briggs to any class of person that comes his way. He prayed the Almighty God to grant Professor Nimi Briggs, his friends and admirers, the opportunity to also celebrate his 80th birthday. He's somebody that, um, in the course of my being the um, chairman of the local organizing committee, I discovered one thing. I never went to anybody to help us do something that wanted a financial um, uh, remuneration. Mm -hmm. Because they all say, oh no, if it's Professor Briggs, I, I would do it for him free. And um, it just shows one thing. The man is rich by the number of friends and the good wish that he has. And I think Professor Briggs has good wish, good yes. will, and he will continue to enjoy and draw on that until, um, um, until the Almighty God calls him. I pray that, um, like he says, that he would like to celebrate this birthday in the university. When the clock's 80, then we can do whatever we like with it. <laughs> because a lot of us who are Professor Briggs's uh, students and yeah. friends and family, including his own nuclear family, they mm -hmm. were very angry that he was coming here because his mm -hmm. children are all very, very comfortable and they're all um, accomplished. Mm -hmm. So they were prepared to to host so their to the 70th birthday. <laughs> but uh, I must say that uh, Professor Briggs said no, that he's going back to his constituents, exactly, exactly. his students. And so, well, I pray and uh, that we will all be here for him to celebrate his 80th birthday. Professor Nimi Briggs was visibly overjoyed at the success of the event. He expressed heartfelt gratitude to his numerous guests. It was truly a memorable day. We congratulate Emeritus Professor Nemesiri Dimba Briggs on his 70th birthday, and we join his numerous guests in wishing him the maximum age that the Creator has granted his beloved children. Congratulations, and God bless you, Adia One. I want to thank everybody for coming. I'm overwhelmed. I thank the state government for all it has done. And in fact, I should say that even though I'm not mentioning people by name, two groups of persons deserve very strong mention. The first is the state government for all they have done, and I'm particularly, I'm, I'm disarmed by the statements by, that were made by the governor today. Never would I have known that the hospital was going to be named after the hospital of that magnitude. And then the state government, and the University of Port Harcourt, for what you've done for me in many respects. I am only one of your quarter seven vice chancellors now, but you differ to me. You have shown me tremendous love. I can assure you that so long as I have strength and power within me, I will continue to serve this university. Mr. Pro Chancellor Sir of our university, I thank you very, very specially. And I wish you an eternal success and may the Almighty God bless you. Thank you. We have with us here Admiral Festus Pabene. That was the name I had 2,000 years ago when I was a doctor. You can I see him, sir? Admiral Festus Pabene. Admiral is a general. I don't deny him the spotlight. Round of applause for Admiral Festus Pabene. He was a doctor of Joe Gashi. Ambassador Joe Keshi, is he here, please? Your Excellency, I'm sorry, we have to keep you here, though. Welcome to the industry.
brought to me a made All the members of this high table, the former high table, and its extension on this side, because you would all recognize, if you were not noted, I was, for more than one hour, MC Williams had been trying to do two things. Constitute the high table and constitute and consolidate its extension on this side <laughs> and to diminish effectively any mental intellectual gap between the two sides of the high table. On your behalf, I'd like to say thanks. So <laughs> it's job well done. And if you send a military officer to the hottest part of any battle, I think the onus rests on you to promote him with what we call instant alacrity. <laughs> and this is what I'm about to do. Williams, our most distinguished and successful MC. From now on, your title is Executive MC. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it means for me to do, you will do it with full authority and permission. Still, you know, I was watching while you were doing all that. One or two eminent omissions. The NUC is only represented here by the Deputy Executive Secretary. Mr. I would have called him Chief Advisor. What are you? Mr. Oh, Mr. If I didn't do this, I know your brother will do something. I'm also delighted that along with our great Admiral Corbett, he and I have met for years, thinking, at least cool, to see him still looking fresh. It's a lot of wonder of the world. I'm so glad you are here. I think my MC forgot him. And I want to bring him in. Wherever he is, Admiral Fingersi, OP, Fingersi, the first time ambassador of the potential, God bless you. We have also come together eminently done so. Most distinguished celebrant with a magnetic presence almost left the University of Nevada without a leader. <laughs> My VC there, Professor Isaac Adewale, has led a powerful University of Nevada team. In that team, we have Professor Ayo Banjo, already recognized. And of course, a good man and friend, Professor Lad, Professor Emeritus, Ladipo, I think they are both well just up there. I miss you, but I'm so happy that you speak to them. And when you love, you will know the quality that goes to your pieces of The only one who is no longer combusted is the old <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Of course, of course, Professor Aitia Oliver is not just Professor from the Bible, he is 
UNESCO part of the family, of which he was the most successful leader. It's good to welcome you to Port Harbor. Whenever we see you, we remember those good days in the past. Without our government, she wrote to me and made being present. I would have said as chairman, this photo was not formed. There was no forum until he came here. <laughs> right.